This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to talk to you about how to multiply integers. Uh, we're going to talk about how positive numbers and negative numbers all factor into this. So there are going to be five sections to this video. Our first section, we're going to talk about how to multiply positive numbers. And uh, specifically, we're going to talk about a multiplication table. This is a multiplication table. And when you use a multiplication table, you should uh, take a row times a column and match them up. Like, for instance, if I wanted to multiply 7 times 5, I look at 7, I look at 5, and I find out where they meet. And it turns out, yes, that they meet at 35. Now, I'm putting this up here because there are people who have trouble um, multiplying integers. And it's partly, and usually the biggest problem is uh, they don't have these numbers memorized. you got to memorize these things, especially for high school when the mathematics becomes involved. These basic skills are going to be required in order to do the harder, more complicated, the higher order thinking types of uh, situations that come up. So you should memorize these up until 12. Many people say you should memorize up until 15. But this is just what the table looks like all the way up to multiplication table, all the way up to 12s. Okay, so memorize this and practice it, and then you'll get better at it. Okay, let's go on to the next section. Okay, this is section two. We're going to talk about what is a negative number. Uh, if I'm going to talk about how to multiply negative numbers, you first have to understand what it is. Uh, so that concept is kind of important. So uh, one way to think about what a negative number is, uh, a lot of people like to imagine money. Um, it turns out that when you owe money, that is a negative number. When you earn money and you work for some length of time and you make some money, that's a positive number. So positive numbers, the money you earn, called income, that's used to pay off debts or negative numbers. Okay. That's one way to think of a negative number, is to think of in terms of money, and we call it debt. Another way, um, more simplistically maybe, is to think about uh, what happens when you dig a hole. This is a picture of a hole that was dug on Mars. Uh, it turns out there was a rover, is a rover, called Curiosity that landed on Mars, and it dug a hole. And you can see what that hole looks like there. Now, it turns out that the sand that was in that hole, uh, we call that a positive number. Um, once you remove that sand from the hole, and, uh, to create the hole, that is, you, you remove the sand to create a hole, the hole itself is the negative number. It's the absence of sand. So think of negative numbers as a hole, and the positive number is the sand that came out of the hole. So if I want to, to, to uh, level this hole and make it level with the ground, I would have to put in all the sand that came out of that hole, and that would create a level uh, area again. Okay, So that's another way to think of it, is removing sand to create a hole. So the hole would be the negative. All right, let's go on to the next section, since you have an idea what a negative number is now. All right, this is section three. Well, uh, in section one, we found out that when you multiply a positive number times a positive number, you get a positive number. So we knew that all the way from grammar school. We never dealt with negative numbers and debt and holes, uh, so we didn't have to concern ourselves with that. So positive numbers times positive numbers are positive. So in this section, I'd like to talk about what happens when you multiply a positive number times a negative number. Well. I think I have the, a table that will help explain this. All right, so here's a table. And you'll notice that I have the value 5 in the first column. And then you can see that I have some changing values in the second column. And it starts off being positive, and it's getting smaller and smaller, and then it becomes negative. All right, what are we going to do with this? Well, uh, it turns out I want to show you a pattern that's going on here. So if I multiply 5 times 2, we all know that the answer should be 10. If you don't, go back to your multiplication table. 5 times 1 is 5. We know that 5 times 0 is 0. Now, mathematics follows a pattern, always follows a pattern. 
So if we have the number 5 in the first column that's not changing, and then we have these values that are changing by one, right, getting smaller by one value, then we would expect that we're going to find some pattern here in this answer column. Okay, well, if we do follow the pattern, you'll notice that if we're taking 10 to 5 and 5 to 0, we're subtracting 5, right? Subtract 5, subtract 5, that's the pattern. So if I subtract 5 from 0, the only number that makes sense there, right, 0 take away 5 is negative 5. And again, if I take negative 5 and I subtract 5 again, I'm going to get negative 10. So this table demonstrates what happens when you multiply a positive number times a negative number. You can see a positive times a negative is a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative, right? So, uh, and the reverse happens also. I mean, I can look at it the other way. A negative times a positive is a negative. A negative times a positive is a negative. In other words, when you're multiplying and one of the numbers is negative, your answer is going to be negative. So, like negative 7 times 8. Well, let's see. 7 times 8 is 56, but I'm multiplying with a negative number. It's a negative 56. So, if I've got uh, 9 times negative 4, Okay, well, 9 times 4 is 36, but because I have one negative, the answer is negative. Okay, so that takes care of how to multiply when one of the numbers is negative. The answer is negative. Okay, let's move on to the next section. All right, so this is section 4. Uh, let's talk about what happens when you multiply two negative numbers. So again, I have another table that will demonstrate uh, what this pattern will reveal. All right, so again, I have a table of values here, and the table follows a pattern. So you'll notice that I have in the first column negative 3, doesn't change. But in the second column, I have the value 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. You can see that it's going down by 1 again, so that same pattern. So if there's a pattern here, and there's a pattern here, when I multiply, I should get my answer column to follow a pattern as well, because mathematics is rational and it follows a pattern. So let's see, negative 3 times 2, well we found out in our last section that when we multiply a negative times a positive number we get a negative value. And I know 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3, but because I'm multiplying with a negative, my answer is negative. Uh, when I multiply by 0, the answer is always 0. Okay, so we get this uh, answer column now, of course, we should expect that there's going to be a pattern with our answer column. And we do see this pattern. So if you'll notice, it looks like I'm going from negative 6 to negative 3, from negative 3 to 0. It looks like I'm going up. I'm increasing by a value of 3. So as, one, as I go from one step to the next, I'm increasing by 3. So if I'm adding by 3, let's see, if I go from 0, add 3, I'm going to get 3. If I add 3, add 3, I'm going to get 6. Okay, and it seems to follow the pattern here, because 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and it turns out that the pattern is real simple. A negative times a negative is a positive number. A negative times a negative, again, is a positive number. A negative times a positive is a negative number. Okay, so we get this answer, and now we see that that is going to be uh, the pattern that we can see. So, in other words, if I multiply negative 5, times negative 4, let's say. Well, I know that if I multiply 4 times 5 is 20, and a negative times a negative is certainly a positive number. It's the two negatives kind of cancel each other in an opposite strange fashion. So if I have negative 7 times, let's say, negative 2, I know 7 times 2 is 14, and a negative times a negative is a positive number. Okay, there you have it. That's our pattern that we're going to follow. So let's take a look at section 5 and do a little practicing. This is section 5. We're going to practice multiplying integers. And we want um, some, possibly, uh, some of these numbers to have negatives. So you can see how the pattern works. Now, when you do this, um, for the first few times, I would say have this table handy. So this table is going to help because it will show you uh, the pattern uh, with signs. Okay, so the, the, it actually says it right there. So 
If you look at positive times a positive, it tells you the result is positive. A positive times a negative, the result is negative. A negative times a positive, negative, and so on. A negative times a negative is positive. So this will help you keep things straight. So let's take a look at some examples, right? Okay, so our first example, let's just say I'm going to pull these numbers right out of thin air here. Let's say negative 3 times 4. Okay, well, 3 times 4, you know that from looking at a multiplication table, like we saw in section 1. Uh, now we need to know what is a negative times a positive. Negative times positive is a negative. Okay, I don't want to have to go through the whole rationale every time I multiply. I'm just going to memorize this table. I explained to you why it works. Now you memorize the table to get the job done when you need this, uh, these facts later on. So let's say we have 5 times 7. 5 times 7, back to grammar school. No negative numbers. You just have to know your multiplication table. 5 times 7 is 35. Done. Uh, let's say we have a negative 8 times negative 4. Well, let's see. 8 times 4 is 32. Got that from my multiplication table. And a negative times a negative is a positive. You don't have to put the positive number here, but those positive just accentuate the fact that they are positive. Okay, and you keep doing this. You keep following these patterns to see what happens. Like when you take uh, 10 times negative 8. Okay, well, let's see. A positive times a positive number would be just a positive 80. However, I've got a positive times a negative. So according to this, a positive times a negative is a negative. So you keep practicing this, and you keep practicing these skills uh, until you get this right. And that's the only way to understand how to multiply integers. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other videos, our lessons, and of course our interactive quizzes. Take care.